Welcome to the NutriBlends Animal Ag Podcast, where we tell the truth about American agriculture. On this podcast, false rumors are run out of town. Misleading marketing gets called out for what it is. And you better have good science to back up your claims or you're getting a boot. Do you hear me? I'm John Ratzenberger, coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. Iliitis is a common and costly disease in grown Finnish pigs. It is estimated that nearly 94% of herds with no clinical signs of disease were found to have subclinical ileitis. In this podcast, we'll share tips for managing subclinical ileitis in your herd and explore how subclinical ileitis impacts profitability. Joining us today from Zoetis is Dr. Kevin Eggers, Senior Technical Services Veterinarian with the Pork Team. He received his DVM from Iowa State University and has worked with a wide range of pork production systems, both here in the U.S. and internationally. Dr. Eggers' experience in the field guides him in providing herd health solutions for pork producers and veterinarians across the U.S., he currently resides in Indianapolis, Indiana. So, Dr. Kevin, what is subclinical ileitis and why is it such a challenge? Yeah, that's a great question. It starts with the definition of ileitis. And ileitis is kind of a general term used in pigs, infection in the part of a small intestine called the ileum. Usually a clinical ileitis will see diarrhea in pigs and lost weight gain and lost conversion of feed. This one is a challenge because a lot of times we don't always see the clinical signs of ileitis, and we call that subclinical ileitis. It is still present, but we just can't see it. Pig is not showing us signs of that. And do not want to confuse that with the pig does not have problems. It just, we don't see it. What age pigs does it most affect and, and what kind of impact does it have? Well, it can affect all ages of pigs but it is most commonly found in grower pigs or older growing pigs, very commonly found there as those animals get older and go to market. Uh, the second area that it's found commonly in is in the replacement gilts. These are females that are being raised to come back into the sow farm and be used for reproductive purposes. But as they get older, they may uh, see some stress and then uh, they'll show you this disease as well. As our introduction said, there's about 94% of the herds that have this bacteria present. And that's really the kind of challenge is most herds have it. Not all herds are showing signs of it, but it is causing losses nonetheless. So how do we change the mindset towards subclinical ileitis? And that's a million dollar question. I think the U.S. swine industry has made a lot of progress in that area. We've been studying it and researching it for many years. I think we've made a lot of progress, but I think there's still a long way to go when you think about mindset. It's awful hard to change, but it starts with diagnostics, uh, using your diagnostics and research and just awareness of the disease. It's important to remember that this disease is caused by intracellular bacteria called Lasonia intracellularis. Lasonia intracellularis is called an obligate intracellular bacteria, and so therefore it must live inside the cells. That's not normal. It's not supposed to be there. And while it's there, it's causing problems. And so it leads to problems just by being inside the cell. How have diagnostics changed to better address subclinical ileitis today? Well, that's what's kind of exciting. We've come through a long period where diagnostics were pretty labor-intensive and not very clear. We started years ago really doing serology or serum samples. And this is where you would go out and take blood samples from pigs and look for the antibodies to this bacteria. A couple of problems with that, really. One is it's a pretty labor-intensive effort to go out and uh, retrieve the blood samples from pigs. Not everyone is qualified to do that or able to do that, and so it's pretty difficult sometimes to get the blood samples. The second problem with that is that what we looked for was antibodies, and antibodies were good because they told us whether or not our pigs had the disease, but they lacked in the area of telling us whether or not it was a problem and whether or not it was a problem right now. 
And so it gave us some information, but it wasn't enough information. What's exciting is now we've moved to kind of the next level of diagnostics. And those are more modern. We use the PCR today. More and more frequently, we use the PCR. And that PCR is quantitative or semi-quantitative. There's a couple of positive things about that. It returns uh, two important pieces of information. One is the PCR actually looks for the antigen or the bacteria itself or pieces of the bacteria. And therefore, you know that the bacteria is there present today. And that is different than the antibody test. Uh, whereas the antibody test talks about what happened in the past, this antigen test or the PCR test looks for uh, that it is present today and, and therefore is it causing problems today. The second positive piece of information is the way you read PCRs is through cycle times, the number of cycles. And it would tell you approximately how much the research labs, the veterinary diagnostic labs, understand their test very well. They understand the relationship between cycle time and the amount of bacteria present. And so they've studied that. And we know pretty clearly now that the results of those tests, how much bacteria present, and we know the level of bacteria that causes disease. And so it's very good information, very uh, time sensitive information, and it really helps us make decisions about uh, taking the next step. And that's what's different about testing today using the PCR versus testing in the past using serology or an antibody test. Well, medications and vaccines are among the solutions to address subclinical ileitis. How are these being utilized? It starts with diagnostics. You add or you layer on clinical signs. Do my pigs have any clinical signs of ileitis or diarrhea? And then you put in your tests with a PCR and maybe serology, but most likely the PCR test. And the samples for the PCR test are fecal samples or oral fluids. That's kind of the new area today is using oral fluids. Oral fluids are a very effective sample. Using those, you can identify how severe of infection your animals are going through and whether or not you need to use medications or vaccines. Medications and antibiotics are used in a very strategic, once you have a diagnosis, in a very strategic manner to position them ahead of the infection to minimize the amount of damage that the bacteria can cause to the animal to the patient. So very strategic using your diagnostics. Vaccines are also very effective. There's two types of general types of vaccines today. One is an oral vaccine, and that's given through the water system to the animals. Uh, They ingest that in their normal daily water, and it protects them that way. The other newer version of the vaccine is an injectable vaccine. It is also effective. So both of those are used today in pretty high frequency. One point to make, though, is a lot of producers use a vaccine and then they forget, you know, they don't follow up. They say, I'm using a vaccine, all's good here. But in fact, I think there's still a need to continue to monitor using your diagnostics, to continue to to do surveillance, to make sure that the vaccine or medication program that you're using, that you're using it properly, you're using it at the right time, and are my animals responding to that program. And that will change over time. So I can't emphasize enough to continue using the diagnostics to monitor the success of your program. Well, how do producers and veterinarians track medication and vaccine effectiveness? That's a good question. There's three general uh, levels of that. And the first one I think we mentioned before is clinical signs. A lot of times producers will make a decision to do something based on clinical signs. Do these animals have diarrhea? Uh, Do these animals have weight loss or variation? And that'll be the first level. The second level really is around performance. You know, average daily gain. I'm not getting the gain on these animals that I would expect. And that's because of the diarrhea. The conversion rate would be much more poor also. Numbers of variable animals or numbers of lightweight animals, and we call them culls, number of cull animals. That would be the second layer. The third one is diagnostics. That's the one that I really want to emphasize is that with the modern diagnostics today, with the PCR, we can go in there in a very easy approach, very simple approach, and we can tell whether or not our medication and our vaccination programs are positioned properly, whether or not they're timed properly, and whether or not they're working. Well, what are some of the on-farm management practices that can be applied to address subclinical ileitis? That's very important. If your animals have the disease, you know, medications and vaccinations are very important. But as you mentioned here, there are other factors which are very important. And because this is a fecal oral transmission, and that is the pigs get it from the environment, 
they get it from being around other pigs, terms like all in all pig flow. So what does that mean? That means that, you know, if my last group of animals had the disease, that they would all go out of the barn and we would wash that barn, make sure it's clean, disinfected, dry. And so we can bring the next turn of animals and make sure that they stay healthy. That's one area. The second one is reducing just all layers of stress. So, you know, animals have the ability to go through stress like humans do and things like, you know, monitoring, making sure they have good uh, feed every day, making sure they have adequate water every day, making sure they have adequate care and animal husbandry every day, make sure the environment, the temperature, the humidity is controlled as best we can. Other areas are uh, controlling other diseases, such as respiratory disease or other types of disease. If we can minimize the stresses these animals go through and what they're faced with, it can really help us manage the severity of this type of disease. We mentioned sanitation, how important that is, and then just good overall biosecurity, making sure if you're seeing or involved with multiple groups of pigs or multiple barns of pigs, that we do our best to use a clean clothes and boots between barns to make sure we're not transferring that disease between barns and between animals. There's a simple procedure that we can follow today that can yield very effective results, and that is this concept of testing oral fluids. Oral fluids is a very simple procedure. We call it hanging ropes. It's really just hanging a cotton rope in the pens and letting the animals chew on it, and then collecting that saliva and sending that into a laboratory, um, a veterinary diagnostic laboratory, and they can test that saliva. We call it oral fluids for multiple diseases. Lawsonia is one of those, ileitis is one of those. It's been very effective. A simple protocol is hanging two or three ropes per thousand head barn and taking that sample and sending it in and you can find a lot of really good information, really easy, really cheap. What final advice do you have for producers and and veterinarians regarding subclinical ileitis? I think the theme hopefully came out in our talk today, but to me, it's use your diagnostics. Today's diagnostics are fast, they're easy, they're clean, they're cheap. You know, oral fluids today are very common, and the results will tell you if you need to do anything really that clear cut. And so a lot of times we'll use a vaccine or a medication and we'll say, okay, that's good enough, and we'll stop there. I just advise people to continue to use their diagnostics, continue to monitor, and don't get complacent. Continue to check on your program. I mean, by definition, subclinical ileitis is something that you don't see. And so you need to bring in things to assist you, to help you. And that's where your diagnostics play a role. It will give you a clear evidence of whether or not you need to do something different or change something to be more effective for both the animals and for the people over their care. So that's my advice. Well, thank you, Dr. Kevin. Um, Ileitis continues to plague the grow, finisher barns and almost all U.S. swine operations. A program approach has shown to be the most cost-effective. I'd like to thank Dr. Eggers from Zoetis for joining us today, and I encourage our listeners to tune in next week to see what's on tap in animal agriculture. <music>